Well, Mark Sandler has a gorgeous lot. Now, it didn't start this way, but he's had 17 years and interest in interior design, and he has created the most beautiful garden rooms that we're gonna look at today. Well, I understand the whole interior design concept and garden rooms, but how really does that mesh together, I guess, and how is it different? Well, I look upon like plants as, as the furniture that's in the room. Of course, there is hardscaping and, and actual furniture, but, but the boxwoods um, sort of anchor the area. Flowers and, and the perennials to me are sort of like the accessories that are in the room. To really tackle this project, I sort of um, felt like I had to divide it into certain rooms. And with each room having a different sort of feeling and what is the room, the area going to be used for. So when we moved here 17 years ago, there were only three mature trees in the lot. Everything else we've added. This area here used to be a, a driveway that was taken out before we moved in, but the dirt just was not good. I tried growing grass here and it just wouldn't grow, so I put down the pea gravel because I think it, it's, it's, it stays neat all the time. And from this central area, we added the pond and most of the yard is shade, so I added a lot of the shade plants that you see. Hostas, of course, grow well, hydrangeas. The field stone was the first pond. We've had to redo it about three times. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress. There's always, you make mistakes and then you, you know, figure out what you have to do to, to, to fix them. Well, let's go take a look at some of the other rooms going through here. Certainly. One thing that I notice is you have lots and lots of boxwoods. I like boxwoods. Uh, I like the, just the architect, to me they're very architectural and they have a, a long history in um, use in garden design, in framing certain areas and, and uh, it helps sort of lead the eye and create hallways uh, through the space. Well, as we come through here, and I love the way you have a gate leading us into a completely different room with a completely different feel. This looks like an outdoor party to me. Actually, we had a, a, a wedding shower for my assistant here on Saturday night, and it was the perfect space. It, it was shaded and, and cool, and we were able to sort of set it up for entertaining. Well, I love the way that you've used all this pea gravel. But I wonder, is there maintenance involved with pea gravel? You've got birds, you've got seeds dropping? No, not really. And that's why I put it down because of it being very easy to maintain. And then I felt like I needed sort of a focal. So I created this rug over here using some reclaimed bricks that was, there was a patio on the other side of this tree. And as needed, I would dig up portions of the patio and use them. I had this uh, design in a, in a English garden magazine and, and dog-eared the page until I finally got to this space. Well, that is just a great example of stealing a good idea and making it your own. Well, Mark, you have a lot of things that were really going for you here once you recognized them, like this amazing tree. It's just really a great foundation, I guess, for this little room that you have here. Now, speaking of working with things that just sort of happen naturally, you have this wonderful table. Um, I love the way it's got moss on it. That was totally unintentional. I bought it at a, at a gardening store and, and, and put it here to sort of use as a seating area and it just happened to moss up and I don't really even have to water it or maintain it. There must be enough moisture in the soil that maybe wicks through and, and lets it um, you know, stay green. Well, I love that idea of happy accidents that work yeah. for you. Now, you also, of course, have fences here uh, because your backyards are sort of narrow next to each other. And uh, one of the things that you've done here is solve a problem I think a lot of us have, which is how do you make a fence interesting? Well, there's a lot of fencing here, and I sort of needed a focal point for this area to balance uh, the other side. So this is a gate that I built to give the illusion that you could go into another section of the yard. There's actually a chain link fence on the other side of that if you open the door. Uh, but I use it as a spring and summer garden tool shed. I love that idea. I think I might steal it. 
Love your hallways. I really like the stepping stones coming through them and all the plant interest. So what I want to know, Mark, is what is your secret for keeping all of this weed free? Uh, hand weeding. Lots of hand weeding. Uh, I usually do it every morning before I go to work when it's still cool out and I try to tackle a section at a time. If you maintain it and don't let it get away from you, it's, it's pretty manageable. Okay, well, oh my gosh, it looks like we've entered the formal dining room. This is a much form, more formal area. This is a parterre garden that I put in. I, again, I used uh, some reclaimed bricks to uh, border it and the boxwoods. And to keep it less formal, I put more casual plants, uh, lilies and peonies. And in the spring, there are tulips in this area. Well, Mark, I have always wanted to have some sort of formal boxwood garden, but it's just a dream because the maintenance scares me. It's not that difficult to maintain. It flushes out spring growth and I trim it in, in the spring and then there's another smaller flush in the fall and I use my hedge trimmers and I trim it in the fall. Well, it's always nice to have a piece of home in your own garden, especially when home is far away, like Connecticut with you. So I know you made a trip there recently. What kind of things did you bring back? Well, I, brought, I grew up in rural Connecticut and where my parents live and where I grew up, they're, they're, it's completely surrounded by woods that used to be the pasture land many years ago for the, the town of Wyndham where I'm from. And there are just stone walls that will just go on and on. So I brought back some of the field stone that are nicely mossed up and ha with lichen. I also brought some native ferns. There are three varieties, mixed them with some hostas and Jack in the Pulpit, which I absolutely love. Um, I included those as well. Well, I added, um, so I put in the dry creek because I sort of wanted a separation from a more formal area into a more casual area and, and built a bridge and created this sort of woodland gardens um, setting, which has a, a, a nice day bed for relaxing and a mixture of, of sculpture. Well, it's very peaceful back here. Now, you just have so much going on and you've done all of this yourself, right? That, that is true, yes. A uh, little, little, little at a time, that's why I, I try to tackle a section. This area wasn't here. Um, up until about the spring. The, uh, so I add a little bit at a, at a time. So do you have any words of wisdom, any advice that people are maybe just starting out try to envision this type of project? I definitely had, I didn't draft or draw this out, but I have in my head, I had a game plan. So I sort of knew the different areas and knew the type of space I wanted and, and the type of plants that um, to put in the spaces. Not to say that I haven't made mistakes and you, you know, you put uh, the wrong plant in the wrong place and it'll let you know it's, it's, it, if it's not happy and usually then in the fall I'll dig it up and move it somewhere else. So take some tips from Mark, uh, take a long-term look at what you're doing and tackle it one piece at a time. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Julie. Thanks for coming. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.